All right, today we have my Alienware R13. This is the desktop with the 12th Gen i9 and the 3090. It already has one two terabyte NVMe SSD, but it has a second slot, so I figured why not fill her up? Fill her up, please. With this. This is the Samsung 980 Pro with heatsink. It is a PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD. I'm gonna use this for storing games. It has read speeds up to 7,000 supposedly. I've used this another one of these in a different desktop. It did hit the speeds it claimed, so I'm looking forward to this one. All right, so as I said, we're gonna be putting this NVMe SSD in this Alienware. And so the first thing you wanna do is make sure there's no power. So you want to unplug the power cable, obviously. Obviously. Sometimes there's like an old school switch back here, but this one does not have it. So what, what you do want to check is go back here and depress the Alienware head, which is the power button, for a couple seconds, and that should discharge any power that's in there. Push it good. Push it. Push it real good. And of course you'll do that, not just for Alienware, but any device you would have. So for the Alienware, this little screw unscrews here. You can use a Phillips or a flathead. I use the Phillips. The screw will not come out. It will loosen, of course, but it's stuck in there, which is nice. That's nice. So you don't lose it. And then, of course, you can just pop it, and then it comes off there, see? So what we're looking for is this screw right here. And, of course, you should have a wrist strap on. I'm not, because I'm an idiot. But I'm using this. Well, actually, I'm using this little iFixit kit. It does come with one. That's where the screwdriver comes from. See, you got your little wrist strap, and then you want to ground it. All right, so I am grounded. I plugged it into the ground. I threw it on the ground. All right, and then so you take this screw out. This iFixit toolkit's good because it's magnetic, and we don't lose your screw. Now, if you're looking at the actual Samsung NVMe SD, not a ton to see. It's just the device itself. Inside the box is just this little cardboard guy and some paperwork, but the paperwork will vary depending on what device you have. So it's just these little slots right here. There's so many slots you won't know where to begin. <laughs> Whoa. They go in there, in this piece right here. And then the screw, of course, will go in there. So they are keyed a certain way. So this one has the heat sink on it. You can buy ones without the heat sink and you can buy a heat sink separately, but this is all in one kit. So it just makes more sense to use it this way right there and there's a little bit of a lip so you just set the device on top of that essentially and then it clicks in there and then with your screw screw it screw it in and you're good to go so i was wearing my wrist strap like a good boy there's not a lot of room to work in there for me i have very large hands you can move this guy up too this is a little light bar not a handle, but you can move that up a little bit easier, probably. My friend Tony has really small hands, so probably easier for him to work in those things than me. Smell like cabbage. Small hands. But he's not around right now. The inside, of course, is very cool looking. All right, then, of course, you just put the this guy back on. It clips right back in, and then you just screw this guy back on. Here's the yeah, fixed it toolkit that I was mentioning. It's a very good kit. All right, let me get a monitor and I'll boot it back up. All right, so I've got the NVMe SED <laughs> in there. You can actually see that little red. It's this guy right there, a little red dot. It's pretty cool looking. This is the first desktop I ever had where you can see inside of it, and I like it. So let's turn it on. Turn on both the monitor and the desktop. All right, so the first good sign is that the desktop didn't explode. That's a bad sign if you boot it up and then explosion. We didn't have that, so it's a good day so far, buddy. All right, and then next we wanna go to disk management. So you'll just type in disk management. So yeah, so it recognizes disk one right away and we're gonna make it a GPT, not a master boot record. So this zero is gonna be the one I currently have, which is my C drive. And then the new one is the unallocated one. And then we'll make a new simple volume and we'll set it to this maximum size, of course, two terabytes. And I'm gonna sign a letter instead of D, I'm gonna go G, G is for G, 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 Nick. or G is for G, 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 G. Gangsta. Uh, no, G is gonna be for games, of course. And I'm just gonna name it games. All right, and there we go, we finished it. And so now if we open up Windows folder and go to this PC, we can see the C drive and now the games drive, which is nice. So the OS is on C and the game is on the G. So let's go ahead and install Crystal Disk Mark. So here is, you see the C drive 
or the G draft. We'll test the C draft first. So let's run a test on all the tests. This will take a minute, but through the magic power of editing, we'll zoom right through it. So you can see with the C drive, we had uh, read speeds of 7,000, write speeds of 6,500, and then it changes. So now let's drop it down to the G drive. That's the one I just installed. And let's run all tests on it. So this is the G drive, which is the Samsung 980 Pro that I just put in. And so we're getting a read speed of 6,996.93. So basically 6997 megabytes per second and this is saying up to 7000 so it's pretty spot on i don't know if on the box if it clarifies the right speeds but we're getting 5100 which is pretty good i think looking at the c drive we're getting much better write speeds on the c drive but the read speeds are pretty close to each other from the one that came with dell versus the one that I put in here from samsung so uh, well alienware dell this i believe is sk Hynix. and then again now the write speeds are pretty far off, but the read speeds, I mean, they're pretty close to margin of error range, I think. So at least for the first look, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna run some more tests and we'll see, but so far I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I've used this on my other desktop, so I know it's a good device. So I think it's gonna be fine. This one, you can see with the blue lights on, how it looks with the Samsung in there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so here we are in my Alienware X17R1, but I did wanna go over some, I did take a bunch of benchmarks on the R13. There's different settings you can do on the R13. You can do balanced or overclock one or overclock two. So I ran three different tests. When we were still on balanced, the C drive, the one that came with the device, had a score of 7132 for the read and the write of 6550. And then the G drive is the one with the heat sink, 6980 and 5166. So fairly close, clearly better for the built-in drive, but obviously that's there could be priority for the C drive, who knows, but still excellent, excellent scores. On the overclock one profile, again, we got 7132, 6636, and 6983, 5177. And then our third set of tests using the overclock two profile on uh, the Alienware R13, the C drive again, 7132 and 6609, and 6973 for the read, and 5152 off the right for the G drive. The G drive is the Samsung 90 Pro. So pretty good scores, you know, all around. Obviously, the scores on the C drive are better, and I don't know the overclock makes any difference for the drives themselves, but in case you're wondering, I did do a test with the C drive with hardware info running. So you can see the temperature displays over here. So this on the overclock two profile, right? We have the 7095 here for being tell the reading. And this is the SK Hynix scores here, the 33 degrees temperature. I don't know why it shows it twice, but it does. And let's be through here. And you can tell the max temperature hit 31 and 34 degrees Celsius for the SK Hynix. And then for the G drive, the one with the heat sink for Samsung, you can see as it runs through the test, it goes through. SK Hynix still 34 and 32. And the Samsung does get hotter at 41 and 44, but still good temperatures. Samsung drives typically do run hot. At least that's what Mash IT told me. Hi, this is David at Mash IT. And surely he's not gonna lie to me, right? <sighs> 1001, 1002, 1003. Oh, God, it's a deep burn. Well, that's the gun sorted. Let's go on with the video. Anyhow, that's with the heat sink. I'm assuming without the heat sink, the Samsung's will score higher. Either way, I think that's a perfectly fine temperature and excellent performance all around. And I have this in my Dell XPS 8950 as well. And I have no complaints about these. I would gladly buy another one. Perfectly fine for me. And I said for the 980 Pro, I had the 970 in a previous desktop and it worked excellent as well. So I uh, highly recommend, looks pretty good to me. All right, that's it. Thanks for checking me out.